CataractCoach.com. Preventing the capsule rip. Approach to the highly pressurized white cataract. Let me show you what happened to the first eye. We poked in with the lens and boom, it splits like that. Holy cow, we're in a world of trouble. That's video 980 if you want to check that out. So now this is the same patient, the second eye. And it's the same thing. Look, when we touch that anterior lens capsule, oh my goodness, look how pressurized it is. The whole lens capsule is pressurized. The pressure in the capsule bag is much higher than the pressure in the anterior chamber. It's a white cataract, but there's no liquefied intumescent fluid. The whole lens is swollen. So we're gonna buzz in with a phaco probe and create a central opening, pow, right there. Now, ideally, you want this phaco probe to be almost aiming towards the optic nerve in the eye, very much aiming straight down so that you get a nice round hole in the lens capsule. So here, a little more viscolas can be put in there, and we're going to buzz in with the probe, and oh, there's an opening. Oh, my goodness, it's already ripping out. What should we do? Keep the phaco probe in the eye. That initial buzz was okay, but didn't create a perfectly round opening because the resident didn't have the round tip fully touching the lens capsule. But we have the infusion pressure set very high, a very high bottle height, infusion pressure of 95 millimeters of mercury. That's going to help. So we'll keep that phaco probe in the eye with one hand and with the other hand using acetatome through the paracentesis to create some sort of small anterior lens capsule opening. Now, this does not have to be round. It doesn't even have to be centered. All it has to be is continuous. By making it continuous, it's not going to run out. It's not going to go out towards the nodular support. So if we can finish that up like this, that looks pretty good. Just a tiny bit left. Let's get some viscoelastic in there. Quickly get the forceps and quickly pull that centrally. Woo, we did it, look at that, okay. Now we've got a kidney bean-shaped opening, that's okay. Don't worry about it, as long as it's round or continuous and curvilinear, there's no edges that are gonna run out, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. It doesn't have to be five millimeters. It just has to be enough to be strong. Now we can go inside there using the IA probe. This lens is soft, it's not dense and removing the whole lens just with the IA probe. Much better. Cortex removal coming up here, we can do a bimanual approach, which is going to be helpful because it's a small rexus. This is not gonna be the final rexus. We're not gonna leave it like this, but we wanna clean up as much of the lens cortex as we can. So again, doing a bimanual approach this is that transformer IA handpiece, cleaning this up pretty nicely. That all looks pretty good. So once we get the eye well in the capsule bag, of course, then we can enlarge the rexus. So cleaning up as best as we can here, a little bit of capsule polishing. You don't have to go crazy here. Just do a beautiful job. So filling up the bag, again, going in, trying to get out a little bit more of this lens material. But you know what? Let's just get the lens inside. So the eye well, of course, is going to be a single piece of acrylic lens with a six millimeter optic. So when we get that lens inside the eye, here it comes. Deliver it. Make sure it goes in the capsule bag. And now we can see that, okay, the rexus, I will admit, is irregular and small. You could leave the case just like this and say, hey, it's okay. It'll be fine. And it would be. But we can do another step. Look at this. We can use our small scissors here to cut a nick in that anterior lens capsule. Use the forceps because the eye is filled with viscoelastic. There's a lot more control here with the eye well already in the capsule bag. And grab that and look at that. We're going to enlarge that capsule rexus. This is going to be a beautiful outcome. So what we did differently in this case is we used the phaco probe to boom punch a hole in the central lens capsule, aspirate out any of that infu the liquid that was there of the lens cortex, but more importantly, to set the infusion pressure at 95 millimeters of mercury. So that phaco probe is in the eye, it helped prevent that high intralenticular pressure from causing issues. Now there were suggestions on our channel of saying, hey, use a larger 18 gauge needle instead of the 25 or 27 gauge, it wouldn't have made a difference. There was an idea of using mac, um, mannitol 
intravenous mannitol. That would have dried out his vitreous, but it would not have changed the intralenticular pressure. So I think the best solution of all is what you just witnessed. Go inside, puncture a hole in the lens capsule with the phaco probe. Hopefully it'll be round. Keep the infusion pressure up and get a baby rexus done first. Take out the cataract and then you can enlarge the rexus.